So um, I applied for architecture school, but I didn't know anyone in the field. I didn't know any architects, let alone black architects. Um, didn't know it would take me, um, well, up to now 10 years to qualify. Um, I, I just had no idea on the steps or the um, obstacles that wow. were ahead for me. Not getting the support at university with my course, um, feeling that I wasn't good enough. And that was definitely through um, the way tutors use their language of you, how they kind of criticised your work mm. or whether you were working hard enough. I distinctly remember in my second year, one tutor, a white guy or the guy told me that I was doing the wrong course in front of everyone at the crit. You're doing the wrong course. This isn't for you. Wow. And it stuck with me. I mean, this was over like 10 years ago. I think when I did my um, my three years initial architecture bachelor, um, we were learning a lot about materials and um, aesthetics. And I was like, but what, what are we doing this for? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't really understand the purpose of architecture because to me, this is a profession that serves society. Yeah. But in a way, my degree wasn't necessarily showing that. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I'm trying to instill in my students that Whatever project that you do, yes, be creative and have fun with it, but you also need to understand the impact that your project has in the local area, mm -hmm. in society, on you know flora and fauna, on our environment. There's so much to think about beyond the technicalities of how a material works or, the, or looks. Architecture as a career path was sort of a seed planted based on my interest at the time. I also really enjoyed sort of art and more creative things and but then I was also quite pragmatic in certain ways and logical and it felt like a good sort of happy medium between yeah. all of it. But I was very, very naive and had no clue about what the architecture industry was about or what being an architect or existing in an architecture space entailed. So yeah, very, very naive. I think just to take that a little bit further, what kind of ignited a real passion after having started architectural education was the realization that you could really make an impact yeah. in the, in people's lives out of 200 students i was the only one with black heritage that's something that a lot of women have spoken about being the only one or one of a few mm -hmm. and just that without even naming it in the moment creates a very lonely experience yeah. as an ex organization just addressing the lack of diversity within architecture and the retention rate is low so a lot of black women tend to drop out of courses at university um, at work they tend to come out of um, practices and pursue other things whilst we do encourage different avenues within the field because there's so much more to being an architect it's very broad um, we want to address what the reason so why you weren't feeling supported during your your, your career journey and so it's the, the challenge is, is actually having the practices willing to engage in such conversations and address it with you. Architecture is all about bringing yourself and creativity, like making it shine. And you, you lean on your traditions and cultures to design. And if you feel like your tutors aren't understanding, you know, your, the basic things that you think are normal for you, yeah. that's already putting you on the back foot. And it's like basic things in terms of how you grew up, you know, what the cities might have been like, how your living situation is. L like your sh lived experience needs to be understood, I think. Yeah. When you go into practice or trying to find a job, there's like all these stepping stones that you come across. Um, where, you know, if your name is not European, you might not get an interview. It's very capitalist driven. It's very much about who's in power, who's holds power. A lot of that coming down from politicians, but if not politicians, it's who has money and who has capital. It's not necessarily being driven by what the needs of the masses are. We think that other people who share in our experience are the people who are probably best placed to make sure that we're advocating for something different, to make sure that we are creating a voice for ourselves not because anyone's given us the authority to do it but more so because we are having the audacity to go and give voice to issues that matter and yes yeah, seek for something that is against the grain or against the status quo because it's what is needed and what's important there's something about naming the thing first mm -hmm. 
right? And we needed some time for, for it to, to click. Mm -hmm. And I think um, then society moved in a way where these things also became more apparent for everyone. Yeah. We knew, but mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone understood at least in 2020, okay, there's real things going on in the world that impact, you know, black people. We are a network of about 450 black women across the world who work and study in the built environment industry in design and construction. Um, we've been established for five years, so we founded in 2018. We started off very informally, we had like a WhatsApp group, we would add more and more people to the WhatsApp group that we would come across or that we kind of knew who were, you know, black women in the built environment space. And then we would sort of plan to meet up at different existing events that were going on. And then also, I think, planned a specific meetup of just the people that we had started contacting and being in touch with. We're able to provide support to them by creating community for them, if you like, yeah. and sharing opportunities as well. Um, I think yeah. that's the key thing. It's yeah. opportunities that we're able to bring forward and the access into um, different types of projects or jobs because that's one I guess what's one thing again we struggled with our own personal experiences when there wasn't a BFA around mm -hmm. for us was having these chances having these um, you know um, finding, a finding a job <laughs> placements having a mentor someone you know that wasn't that was um, either not fair or very hard to get mm -hmm. and so that's something that BFA is now able to offer our members and it's something that we're very privileged and happy to do and uh, we think our members definitely love having that access. We as the co-directors we offered our time voluntary it was evenings weekends anywhere you could fit it that's how we were working but we really weren't making any money from this it was very much a labor of love we then sort of moved into a space of make sure that we were always paid for anything that we did talks to do crits like guest lecture at um, universities we would get practices that approach us saying we aren't getting a diverse range of candidates in could you help us and we would do that this is not something that needs to be so inward focused it needs to exist outside of architecture as well. There is so much value in partnering with people that are not within the architecture space because ultimately they could be our clients, for instance, because yes. they are the people that need places and spaces designed and built. In a utopian world, we would exist in a space where we didn't need an organization like BFA to be advocating for some kind of change. We will reach a space where people know and understand intrinsically what equity is and pour themselves into it in every sex of life. At Sisterhood, having shared experiences, finding encouragement and empowerment through conversations with other people. I think yeah. inspiration, constantly getting inspired by others um, whilst we continue to support each other is what makes BFA special to me.